and welcome to this video about gene therapy. Um, and so if we start by defining what exactly gene therapy is. So gene therapy is when you insert a gene um, into an individual cells or tissues and it's used to treat um, a specific disease and usually hereditary diseases like cystic fibrosis. So for instance in cystic fibrosis and people produce too much mucus and that's down to a mutation in a specific um, gene. What gene therapy will target um, is those cells that cause this excess um, sticky mucus to be produced and they would look to alter um, the genetics of those cells in order, to, in order to rectify the problem. Now there are two major types um, of gene therapy. The first is germline, the second is somatic cell uh, and they differ in the, t the cells that they target. So germline therapy targets sperm and egg cells which are the germ cells or they target the cells that produce the sperm and the egg and they're used to correct um, the genetic defects of uh, the offspring or embryo. The issue with this is um, that obviously this isn't a treatment that can therefore be used on people currently suffering from a disease because obviously you can't target you know, embryonic cells because all of their cells are now affected. Um, and so in order to do that you have to undergo somatic cell therapy which targets your body cells. And so these try to correct um, the mutations found within the body cells and it can be used to treat things like cancer, heart disease, and potentially things like cystic fibrosis. So in order to undergo gene therapy, what you first of all need to do is you need to find a way of extracting um, a healthy allele or a healthy gene. Um, and so one of the first things that's used is in order to, in order to extract a specific gene, um, you can do one of two things. One, you can cut out um, a gene using um, a specific type of enzyme called a restriction endonuclease, um, represented here by scissors, um, as they act a bit like, you know, for instance, they cut DNA at specific points, and there are a number of different types of restriction endonuclease. And so you can actually physically cut out um, the healthy gene, and then you're going to use that later on to implant into um, another cell. Or you can use an enzyme called reverse transcriptase, um, which basically uses mRNA and produces a single strand um, of DNA, which you can then insert. Um, and with it, that's, in fact, a more common route to use that enzyme. Um, but the one I'll show you here is just using the restriction endonuclease. And so if this is someone's healthy um, DNA, so let's say, for instance, we're treating cystic fibrosis, they cut out the healthy gene um, for the CFTR gene here um, and now they're going to use that and insert that um, into what's known as a plasmid. A plasmid's um, a circular piece of DNA and it's found commonly within bacteria um, and so we use the same restriction endonuclease to cut it out um, and because it cuts at the same point um, it leaves specific areas on the DNA called sticky ends and these sticky ends have a single strand of nucleotide basis free um, and it means that if you cut something with a restriction and a nuclease and it leaves a sticky end, it makes it quite easy um, for a complementary base pair to then pair up, um, which is what happens here. And so a plasmid's cut and also you've got now a, a healthy um, gene for um, that doesn't obviously have any cystic fibrosis. Those two things are combined. Um, and they're combined by using another enzyme called DNA ligase, which acts a bit like tape. Um, which basically forms the bonds between um, the healthy DNA, in this case, and the plasmid. And so you've now got what's referred to as a recombinant piece of DNA. And now that circular plasmid, plasmids are actually used within bacteria to transfer um, genetic information between them. And so um, this recombinant DNA can now be inserted into a vector, which is basically a vehicle or a delivery device, which can then be exposed to a specific cell that you want to target, be it um, the cells in the airway, the cells in the digestive tract, or even in the reproductive areas. Now this particular type of gene therapy is very prevalent with somatic cell, and so if we think about this being used on individuals who have cystic fibrosis, what you've now got is a circular piece of DNA. And what you want um, is that circular piece of DNA to be um, put into the cells um, that have caused the problem um, or are causing the cystic fibrosis. And so there are two major ways in which that's done. Um, the first is that plasmid is now wrapped in um, fat molecules or liposomes. 
um, and the fat stops other things interacting uh, with the DNA and then for instance in cystic fibrosis that may be taken in the form of an inhaler. Another way to do it is to use um, viruses. Viruses are a very useful um, delivery device for these um, recombinant DNA because um, they're actually physically designed um, to put genetic information into cells, that's what they do. So what scientists have done is they've stripped out or they've stripped away lots of the bad sections of the virus and they've inserted um, the recombinant plasmid and they're using um, viruses to target the specific cells of the airways. Um, if, if, for instance, we're talking about cystic fibrosis. But the uses for this are, are huge because if you think about it, um, if we can introduce genes into specific cells, it means we can rectify a number of different problems. And so this down here just shows the different types of cells um, that could be targeted. Um, and like I said, the reason why viruses are so useful is because that's what essentially they do. Viruses implant their genetic material into cells and then use the cell to make more copies of itself. And so by using an attenuated version um, of a virus, it means that you can then um, insert that new plasmid, um, the recombinant DNA, into the cells of the airway um, that cause the cystic fibrosis and potentially treat the disease. Um, now there are some issues with this. Um, the first issue, particularly if you're treating cystic fibrosis, is it's difficult to get um, the virus to the actual cells that are causing the problem um, because of the thick sticky mucus. Also another problem is, um, and, what, and a problem they're finding consistently with gene therapy, is that the effects don't last too long. Um, they're finding that when the, the gene has been um, introduced into the cell, it doesn't necessarily um, have an effect over two weeks. Um, and, due to, and due to the fact that the cells are constantly being replaced, it means that every time cells get replaced, it means that the ones that do not have the introduced gene therefore have, still have the same problem. And so scientists are trying to find a way in order to get not only um, the recombinant DNA into the cell, but meaning it has a long-term lasting effect.